I'm John Sutherland, a rock journalist, and we're here today visiting with Tony McAlpine, who's just recorded four original songs for this video. Spend some time with us as we explore his guitar technique. How you doing, Tony? I'm doing fine, John. Having a good time today, and I'm uh, very excited about discussing uh, the different uh, techniques that I uh, yeah, use on the guitar. And uh, before we get started, why don't we uh, tune up? Sounds good to me. Okay. We'll start with the E string. John, this tune's called uh, Sammy Bone Shuffle. I won't ask where you got the name. Well, my bass player's daughter, you know. Uh, That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, so we'd, uh, we'd uh, write a song about her and dedicate it to her, and, uh, you know, it's kind of a fun jam, up-tempo thing, and basically uh, Larry and I are playing a lot of the same unison lines together, and you'll notice the, uh, the hammering type of bass line, the thing that I'm doing with the guitar. Kind of a cool... Let's cool check thing. it out. Yeah, sounds cool.
rocking tune to start with. Uh, I enjoyed a lot of, of that song. There's one thing that I wanted to ask you about, the unison slapping that you're doing with Larry the bass player, that really interesting technique. And what do you do with a pick when you're well, using your thumb? If I'm, if I'm lucky enough, you know, I can basically I can get the pick between my, uh, my, my finger here, the joint, and the, uh, the tip of my finger. And uh, when I'm holding it in there, I just I'm tapping the notes. I'm tapping four, four notes, you know, hammering them on and pulling up, just like a bass player would creates like a really funky kind of mm -hmm. you know, grooving sound. You can actually move that around the neck, you know, and you mm -hmm. can use that into any type of pattern that you really like. That's a long way from the speed picking technique that you have mastered. Um, well, you, sh you show us some of your tricks? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think what happens is, uh, you know, as you play more and more and you start to experience more things in life, you start to, uh, you know, your appetite musically starts to expand. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think basically that's, uh, you know, that's the point in which we're, you know, the road in which this new band is traveling to. Mm -hmm. um, what? How did you develop your, your, your right hand? To, to do some of the faster arpeggios that you do, particularly in this song? You know, I was really into a lot of the uh, repetitive, you know, picking patterns. A lot of the picking patterns where you'd really get involved with the pick and, uh, and um, playing three notes on the string. And, uh, for instance, an exercise... Uh, requires just a lot of alternate picking and perfect timing. Um, if you're in a position where your pick is not in contact with the string at the same time the finger you know, comes down, you get a lot, a lot of string noise and uh, you, you really don't want that to happen. How do you hold your pick, Tony? I mean, I just go for really a comfortable position. Yeah. Okay, that's comfortable to you? It looks that's like a lot, of it, a lot of it's back inside your hand. Yeah, I, well, I tell a lot of students that, you know, that I work with and you know, when I do master classes in clinic just to, uh, to be comfortable with, 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 uh, you know, with your style and don't try to copy mm -hmm. you know, somebody's certain pick style but just hold it in a, in a manner in which you, you know, you're really comfortable with. Well, I'm watching your hand. It looks like it's hardly even moving. It's just such an economy of motion. Well, you know, I believe in a lot of, uh, in, in the fact that too much motion is, is wasted energy. And um, a lot of times when I'm picking each of the notes, uh, you know, with a lot of aggression and I want that heavy pick sound, um, there's a way to achieve that, which is an equal balance of muting with the wrist here and a lot of tapping with the hand and rolling on some of the notes that you just you happen not to be picking. Um, for instance, if I'm coming into a run and I'd like to... Uh, I'll just pick the top string here. I'll pick all the rest of them to get a really... taking D, F, G, A, and B flat here, and I'm just hammering on the... Okay, and an inverted pattern under that, I'll pick the, the A and the B flat, and hammer on the F and D. You carry that pattern really all over the neck. Sometimes I do it in a slightly arpeggiated form, um, you know, down here with the, with the first three strings, the mm -hmm. E, A, and D string. And I'll play like the C sharp, hammering on the C sharp minor triad, which is C sharp, E, and G sharp. It sounds like I'm picking a lot of the notes. that in a lot of your songs there's one passage in this song I noticed those you know the sweeping arpeggios oh yeah the broken chord uh, yeah um, those particular chords that we're playing that you're the arpeggios I'm playing a B A and a D and an E chord and I'm playing them in this fashion where I'd play the A major slide up to the D major and the E major
So it's a cool, cool little pattern. I, I like to, uh, I really made that kind of smooth by taking it all over the neck, you know, to, making an exercise of it. Sliding the index finger up. I notice at the end of that sweep that you're tapping the last note of each phrase. Where are I, you going with that? Well, you know, I, I, I used the, the, the finger to have an extended uh, minor scale. In this pattern, I'm playing a C, sharp, a C minor arpeggio here. I can take it in any uh, you know, direction, really, that I want within the, the, uh, the minor scale pattern. That would be C, that's D, and E flat. You can slide your finger too to, mm -hmm. to get different types of like bowed bowed sounds. Also, you know, you don't. I, I try to get away from that a little bit to break up the tone and. Um, you mean it, you go back and forth between the two different styles? Exactly, and I'll incorporate the muffling and the, you know, the, and the economy picking again, just picking the top part of the, the run and hammering on the rest. employing the scale idea that we were talking about when we were it gives you a lot of freedom so you it can gives me freedom yeah so that I'm not I'm not really too concerned with how where the position to pick is because uh, you know I don't want to be in a pattern where I take the pick away from the strings and I don't have the strength in my right hand to keep mm -hmm. the soloing ideas together mm -hmm. so the techniques should just be a tool you know to utilize so you can express mm -hmm. your musical ideas Start leaning. It's basically just a lot of weight. I've noticed one of the things about your playing, Tony, is that uh, a lot of times people try to copy things exactly without understanding the concept. It's much more important to understand the concept of what you're trying to achieve. And that is probably what gives you the freedom that you have on the guitar when you can go so many different places with your ideas. Exactly. I mean, for instance, there's, so, there's a million different ways to play arpeggiated ideas. I, you know, I try to do that a lot. Um, and, you know, instead of just playing the, the triads, I play like sevens. You know, major mm -hmm. seven arpeggios. Where you're, an example, C major seven, I have a C, E, G, and B. Mm -hmm. And I'll have a synthesized type of effect happening instead of just a raking, sweeping motion. I'll have more of a. That's basically just uh, you know C major seven, seven being there and the octave being here. It's a much more musical way to look at how the notes are put together. Exactly, it gives me a lot of continuity with the with the instrument. To uh, it highlights my solos in different ways. That particular pattern, too, I'm utilizing a lot of pentatonic scales also, which is evident in the Sammy Bone Shuffle. Yeah, yeah it's part of the core of the song. Yeah, instead of um, concentrating too much with the ideas of, uh, you know, uh, the, the arpeggios, I, I, I build a lot of the, um, the function of the song, the mechanics of it, around the pentatonic scale. Uh, the song's in F sharp minor, so we're starting with... So I've learned to rake the... Uh, you know the um, the arpeggio in a pentatonic type fashion. You know, just just really, your fingers are just fluttering along the. <laughs> pentatonic. Did you encourage thing. other players to to when they compose to use as many diverse ideas as you've used in this song? I mean, you you started out with a funky little groove, and you had yeah. the the major sweeps. There's a lot to this song. Yeah, um, well, you know, I think it's very important when you're playing music to surround yourself with uh, a very strong core of uh, musicians. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, with the drummer that I have, you know, Mike Toronto, and the bass player, Larry Dennison, uh, 
these guys are very much into the exploration of, of trying different ideas and not getting locked into just one particular way to do things. And I think that that's where, uh, that's, that's, uh, you know, where our strength lies. I noticed when you guys were taping these songs that you did three or four takes of each song, and every time the song was markedly different. Well, that's because I don't, I'm, I'm not too interested in working out uh, a lot of the, uh, you know, the ideas that I'm, um, that I'm trying to put down. I'm, I'm more involved in uh, where playing from the heart comes from, and I think that can only be, uh, you know, done with uh, just, you know, the practice, just improv, improvisation. You know, I was going to ask you about that because there's a solo you do at the end of this uh, video that was the last thing you taped today, and it. Um, it makes me wonder how much improvising do you do when you're soloing? Do you have a plan, or where do you go? Oh, with it? definitely. I, just, this just, just like basic overall theory. You're not, you know, the notes and the technical part. Well, you know, I, I, I get a lot of feeling from from the chords of music, just from the, you know, the basic. I like to play around the strongest parts of the chords, which to me is, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, first five notes. And it build around the uh, you know the triads and the chords. And I definitely use a lot of vibrato mm -hmm. in, in the techniques because a lot of these different ideas that we do would come off sounding really cold if they didn't have that singer type uh, tone. You know. Well, we like to say it's a lyrical sounding you know a way to play guitar. E exactly. I need I need to have the the guitar speak to me in certain ways because you know it's just wooden steel and if it's not uh, you know if it doesn't have that. And it's wood and steel and fingers and skin and bone too. I mean, everybody exactly. everybody can make the same guitar sound different. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's very true. Tony, let's take a look and listen at the next song, a sweeping romantic ballad. Um, what should we look for? Well, you know, John, I've I've always been uh, very fascinated with those uh, with the with those type of songs. Um, you know, ever since uh, I think I really took a, a serious in depth look at it on the Maximum Security album with a song called uh, Tears of Sahara. And again, on this new album, Freedom to Fly, uh, you know, we have a song called The Champion. Very emotional playing on both songs. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you very much. Um, well, this particular song, um, we have the space of the actual trio here. Um, I just thought that this was a very sad type of, uh, you know, haunting little melody. Um, I just feel that um, a lot of those different shades that you can get in music, you can have achieve them, you know, in, in different ways instead of uh, in just the intensity of the way that you play a passage or, or the, you know, the type of notes that you play. Just the most simple things, you know, to me sometimes have, uh, have a lot of feeling. Let's check it out.
Tony, I really enjoyed the hammer on you used to carry the melody. Could you show us a little bit more of that and well, how you developed that? You know, John, the, 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 the playing without the, without the pick attack creates a very smooth tone. And um, I, I think a song like a, a particular ballad, um, mm -hmm. you know, that we have here, uh, "Broken Dreams," uh, it lends itself to that that particular type of technique. Um, for an example here, um, if we take an F sharp minor scale on the same string, we play that in groups of three notes at a time, starting with the A, a third above the highest F sharp. We get a very bell-like sound down here. It's a very interesting idea. I can carry that in different keys, you know. As I hold down these particular notes, my my uh, you know my left hand is is particularly involved with creating different chord tones, you know. So I, that's where I utilize the bar mm -hmm. to to enhance the vibrato. I really like the, the smoothness of the hammer on ideas. Mm -hmm. It's very evident in the solo of the song. Uh, I think the. Uh, the uh, progression shifts to um, A minor, and I start really, um, you know, playing on you know, the open without the pick at all. Mm -hmm. Just for a lot of arm weight, you can you can you can achieve that smooth tone. There was some bending. You know, where you're just taking the note a little bit farther than it is when it's inside the fret as it normally belongs to. Exactly. Uh, can you show me, you know, some of the technique you use to change the pitch of the notes when you're... Yeah, you know, a lot of times I, I you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take the, the actual... Mm -hmm. It creates again that bow, mm -hmm. you know, that that bow effect. Instead of you know actually bending to the next note, just it's a very hammered. It's more modern sounding. Yeah, it's actually. a smoother sweeping. That's the same idea, but slurring the other way, in the opposite mm -hmm. direction. When you were playing the core of the melody, I noticed that you were dragging the hammer on. Just it made it flow really, really nicely. Right. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. Because the song is um, is a ballad, um, you know, a lot of the melodies have to be played with mm -hmm. a lot of uh, feeling, a lot of passion in them, and if. Um, if, I if you're just grabbing the notes staccato, it's e not going to have the same. Exactly, and that's why you know when I when I tend to um, you know play with a hammered-on uh, pattern, you, I, I notice that my uh, my uh, my hand is moving mm -hmm. in more of a you know fashion this way instead of up and down because mm -hmm. the pick is no longer being employed as a as a sound device. Mm -hmm. Now the the actual you know technique of pulling off to each finger mm -hmm. is going to uh, generate the tone. For instance, I can play an A minor all over the neck with this type of pattern instead of just playing an A minor scale in one box. Figure, I'll use, utilize that movement. And 
in previous um, interview situations we've talked before, one of the things you've, you've pointed out to me is you don't like to be boxed in. You don't like to be caught in a trap where you're in one place and there's only one way out. Right, right. Um, Precisely. Did you utilize that at all in this song, where you could have gone several different ways in the same place? Well, you know, it, it happened, and it, it, it happens when we do multiple takes of things, especially mm -hmm. on records, and, mm -hmm. and especially, uh, um, uh, you know, in, in, in an environment where you're doing a, in a video, because um, you, you want to develop the this, the sense of uh, you know the, the feeling that you can really go a place where your mind, uh, you know, where, where your mind is and your hands are just the tools to get you there. Because I mean, I've always thought, Tony, that the, the greatest skill as a musician is completely free and can go wherever his brain wants to take him with you know, the ma management of an instrument. It is. It is the dangerous part about practicing, practicing too many, um, you know, um, the ideas which are um, w could stagnate your creativity mm -hmm. is that you have to learn how to apply them in different, uh, in different uh, you know, facets. For um, instance, like this hammer-on idea that we're talking about in the key of A minor, Go ahead and you know t stretch it to the key of A major and, mm -hmm. and you know things like that just by you know, raising your third tone in the A minor scale, A major. The sixth and seventh tones get raised also. So now I'm playing the same idea where I was moving my hands around mm -hmm. the neck, but I'm doing it now in major keys. Do you consciously think when you're playing of what it would sound like if you played a melody in one part of the neck as compared to another? Yeah, I, yes. Do I you do. incorporate that in the? Yeah, I mean, oftentimes, you know, if I'm I'm in, I'm in a pattern where um, I've I've uh, I'm, I'm involved in playing a particular melody in a song, and because this is instrumental music, mm -hmm. um, there's no break from actually playing the actual you know the lead tones. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm involved with uh, the uh, you know the task of playing a, uh, a particular melody, and I'd like to. Um, um, you know, highlight it with certain little leads. I won't um, try not to develop an, a, a, an idea or a habit where I have to play it in one one pattern. Um, for instance, um, the bridge part of uh, Broken Dreams. Where it's, uh I might do some licks around that. You know, instead of having to go. Play that pattern over there. So definitely, um, I definitely encourage people to try to practice as many ideas all around the neck, you know, mm -hmm. and it, yeah, try to try to get used to uh, creating a whole sweet spot. You know, where the whole guitar is uh, you know a friendly place for you to be. Tony, in the, in the bridge, there's some harmonic thirds. How do you know which notes to pick? Well, I'm following the uh, the harmonic structure of of, of of the minor chord or the the major chord. If I happen to be playing in a major chord, this particular song, um, you know, for example, is is a minor, and uh, each scale has its own tonality, mm -hmm. which you you'd have to adhere to. Um, you know, the F sharp minor, the first third is a minor chord, F sharp and A. Uh, the next third in G sharp. It's major. The next one is major. Major. Each one of broken chords. So like Eddie Van Halen when he I tend to also use my ear and go by how I feel it should sound. Mm -hmm. So the next song is More Than A Lot. There's a lot in this song. We'll get into it later, but let's hear the song first.
Very interesting. There was a lot there to think about. I enjoyed the, the counterpoint, and also the solo sounded really interesting to me. What's the... Well, the difference in the solo in that particular song is it's in it's a major key. Right. Um, uh, it's a lot fresher, a uh, lot, uh, lot cleaner, I like to think, you know, of an idea. It's less dark because of uh, the, um, you know, the, the raised third, it's in six and seven tone in the major, uh, in the major scale, as opposed to those being flatted in the minor scale, which creates a, a darker image. And I wanted this song, I wanted the solo to actually go to a certain place. Um, instead of being dark, you know, and heavy, I wanted to actually uh, have a certain type of contrast, you know, um, with, with the song. Tony, you mentioned chord suspension. Do you think that's uh, something young players should pursue more than you? I think so. I, it's one of the things I always stress with, um, with some of my students is um, playing uh, rhythm ideas, um, a rhythm structure, and then uh, continually hearing that in your head while you play a lead over over the, um, the, you know, the alternating chords. In other words, um, an example of that would be to, to uh, start with like an E chord, and by chromatically going up at least, let's say, um, you know, four, four different, four different uh, frets, we'll address the harmonic structure of each of those chords in, uh, in our soloing without, uh, without losing the rhythmic aspect of uh, what we're trying to do. continually um, the E drone it, it sort of is mm -hmm. you know permeates over the whole progression yeah. yeah that's um, in uh, this particular song uh, more than enough that's exactly uh, what we got going on here in the solo section even with the idea um, uh, with the pentatonics, I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I'm, I like to think I'm like superimposing different chords over uh, over other chords. This, in, in essence, would be like a. If you think of that, it would be a C sharp uh, minor um, you know, pentatonic run. But over E major, it's, it's very major sound. In essence, what you're saying with those chord suspension, so you're creating right. some tension. Exactly, I'm, I, I, and I like to try to, to include that in my, my soloing, especially with the, with the arpeggiated um, ideas. I believe at the end of the solo in this particular song, I um, went outside of the actual uh, E major, you know, feel by st stretching all the way up to F sharp. Kind of like the ideas too that the um, you know when you're bending a certain note you get that three chord you know you get that three chord feeling and you get that third tone in there. It's another idea on that. Uh, another of the little nuances I noticed, Tony, is you're sliding backwards as you're playing some of the notes in the melody. Can you show us some of that? Yeah, I am. So. I think I um, derived that technique from uh, you know listening uh, to a lot of the you know, early blues stuff that you know I used to listen to, the you know, Johnny Winter stuff, and uh, just creating more of a backwards uh, backwards bend. Mm -hmm. That melody, I'm. It's very uh, you know it's a very very fresh type of different uh, way. Oh, I think, in, in terms of, instead of coming under the note, you know, mm -hmm. come from the, from the top of the note. I do that a lot, too, you know, at the, the end of particular runs that I might play. It's just a, yeah, it adds a, a real different feel to them. Yeah, it adds a different uh, type of dimension to, to what you're trying to uh, express. Well, that kind of takes us in the direction of the next song. Um, Baloney Pony Blues, is that what we're going to call it? I think that's what it's called. Uh, don't ask me what that's all about. Can we check that one out? Let's take a listen to that.
was fun. You know, Thanks, wandering off into the blues direction for a while there, there's some very interesting things that uh, we'd like to bring up. Uh, I, th I find blues a very emotional style of music with a lot of room. And here you spent some time uh, working with intervals in an interesting way. Yeah, I, I um, like to... Um uh, I'm very fascinated, of course, with the pentatonic, um, you know, ideas. It, it's, it's very limitless, but I, I also like to employ the, um, the, the, the fresher, the aspect of, uh, you know, the major and minor chords mixed in with the, with the pentatonic scales. I think that um, that type of style I was I was always into from you know listening to early West Montgomery stuff yeah. you know, and um, I tried to take it into a different direction by g getting like an almost like a pseudo jazz type you know. Stuff. You know, Tony, most people don't look at you as a blues player, and that may have been a little bit out of character. I know you've always been into it. But are there things? Are there some ideas you can show us about you know playing blues guitar and where you're going with it? You, you know. Um, yeah, I, I don't just look at myself as a as a, um, as a stylist in any one particular um, you know direction of music. I look, I think of myself more as a musician, you know, because of you know the background of playing classical and uh, you know, starting with with a lot of blues, you know, in the very beginning. Um, I, I just really like what it does to uh, what it does to to the rock feel of uh, the instrument of music that I'm uh, you know involved with playing these, these days. You know, I really like the idea of. Oftentimes, I'll sit home by myself or. Uh, you know, if I'm in between, uh, you know, takes at a, at a certain gig or something like that, or a clinic or whatever, I'll play by myself. Those type of chord ideas. There was a lot. There was a lot there. I mean, the sweeps, the bends. Yeah, you see, see, I can employ these sweeps in in a lot of different, just you know, way more than just uh, you know the the A minor thing. You can really get into the pentatonic idea. It has a lot of soul, you know. Obviously, when you're when you're playing blues, and if you can really get that into your, uh, you know, into your, your personality. I think your music will speak a lot more. It'll do have you, a lot more clarity. Do you think any differently when you're playing different styles of music? I'm curious. Uh, y you know, to me, it comes from the same place. It's, it's coming right from the heart. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it always was, even if it going right back to my, my first record, you know, um, you know, Edge of Insanity, all that music was, was, was coming right from the heart. Um, I just, I, you know, you go through different feelings, uh, you know, in life, different things happen to you. And, um, you know, which is evident in the, in the direction and the style of uh, music that I'm into these days. Tony, can you uh, do me and a lot of other people a favor and slow some of those licks down and show sure, them how, sure. how they come apart? When I played the C7, the dominant 7 chord. Started with a 6th here. Flat five. And again, as you see, my hand is doing a lot of the, uh, you know, the sliding back and forth over the frets. It creates a, a lot of. Tony, you've showed us a lot of different sides of your player personality, a lot of great tips today. Um, aside from the technical things that you can show us, what is the best advice you can give a young guitar player coming up? Well, John, dedication is the, is the key factor. You really have to really be into what you're doing and at all costs um, make certain sacrifices in your life to um, achieve that, that type of uh, you know, success. Um, and um, I don't mean success monetarily or, or uh, 
but just more spiritually, just being able to, um, you know, attain the type of, uh, you know, accomplishments that you think that you can, um, you think that you should be, uh, you know, achieving. And uh, as a very young person, I realized that um, I had to make sacrifices, and uh, um, I sacrificed a, a lot of, uh, you know, playing with other kids and, uh, you know, things like that, and hanging out uh, for practice. And uh, perfect practice makes, uh, you know, perfect playing, and uh, you have to be dedicated to, the, to those results. Thank <laughs> you.